November 22nd, and this is your coffee break live in the press box at New Canaan High School as we prepare for the Turkey Bowl on Thanksgiving Day. We have the latest local news for you, and Frank Granito will join us a bit later to take a look at the forecast and talk about what's happening in local sports. But first, on to today's news. The Stanford Advocate reports that a suspect in the brutal murder of Stanford native Joey Comunale was indicted by a grand jury in Manhattan on Monday, just a day after proclaiming his innocence in an interview with the New York Daily News. 25-year-old James Rackover has been formally charged with concealing a human corpse, tampering with evidence, and hindering prosecution in last week's stabbing death of 26-year-old Comunale, a popular and athletic member of the Stanford community. The other suspect, 28-year-old Lawrence DeLeon, waived a court appearance and is expected to return today for a bail-related hearing, according to the New York District's Attorney's Office. No new charges have been filed, and both men are still being held on a $3 million bond. The suspects were initially brought up on additional charges of second-degree murder, but that was dropped at the arraignment, pending further investigation of who used the knife in that stabbing. Authorities say Communale was killed November 13th after a night of partying at Rackover's luxury apartment at the Grand Sutton Tower in Manhattan's east side. The West Hill High School graduate was stabbed 15 times in the chest before his corpse was burned and buried in a shallow makeshift grave in New Jersey, according to police. And in other news, Sacred Heart University announced Monday an agreement to purchase the former GE headquarters in Fairfield, just over the Merritt Parkway from the eastern border. SHU President Dr. John Patillo said that the school entered into an agreement with General Electric to purchase its 66-acre former global headquarters. He said they hope to use the property as an innovation campus to expand their new school of computing, which is focused on computer engineering, gaming, and cybersecurity and to develop programs in STEM fields such as health and life sciences and technology. They'll also move certain elements of the Jack Welch Biz College of Business to the new campus, including a new hospitality, hospitality management program that will make use of facilities both at GE site and the Great River Golf Club. And in other news, a Ridgefield police officer removed the image of a swastika from the playground wall in Ballard Park on Saturday evening, November 19th. Police Captain Jeff Kreitz told the press Monday that police received a phone call that night from a citizen who saw a photograph of the red spray painted symbol that someone posted on the town Facebook page as a show of concern earlier in the day. Kreitz said the officer was able to remove the mark by pouring some water on it. The incident is under investigation and police are asking anyone with information to contact them at 203-438-6531. Kreitz said they want to know about these incidents immediately and they'll always encourage the public to call about it. Rabbi David Levy Reiner of Congregation Sheer Shalom of Westchester and Fairfield counties told the press Monday he was preparing a statement and that he was deeply saddened and troubled by that incident. Jane Crimmins, a South Salem resident who frequents Ballard Park with her children, also called the press Monday Monday to report that she will be organizing a peaceful gathering that will take place in front of the playground at 2 p.m. on Friday, November 25th. And in other news, another Darien car dealership became the target of tire and rim theft during the early morning hours of November 13th. Employees at Land Rover of Darien at 90 Post Road found a white Jaguar F-type coupe with its wheels or, and, or tires sitting on bricks in the parking lot. According to police, the building on the property is currently vacant and the lot is being used to store vehicles. Though the lot is secured by a fence, the vehicles had been left unlocked in transit mode, which restricts many of their functions. Removal of the rims and tires requires a special lug nut key, which was left inside of the vehicle. Surveillance footage showed at least one suspect moving around the lot at around 3.30 in the morning, and it is believed they pried the portion of the fence facing the Bertucci's parking lot to gain access. A canvas of the area the next morning did not produce any positive results, but the Detective Bureau processed the scene for further evidence. The damage to the vehicle and the stolen parts were valued at about $9,000. 
And a Hamden man has been arrested for allegedly impersonating an officer wearing a fake uniform and carrying a weapon. Nicholas Ferrucci was arrested Monday on a court warrant charging him with impersonating an officer, carrying a dangerous weapon, and second-degree breach of peace. Those charges stem from an incident back on October 10th, according to police. Ferrucci started his ruse as a lawman when he started tailgating and flashing his vehicle's high beams around 1 a.m. Monday at a motorist on Evergreen Avenue in Hamden. Ferrucci then followed that motorist to their home on Cannon Street. The operator of the vehicle quickly exited and identified himself as an off-duty police officer. After a brief Volber altercation, the alleged cop left the area stating that he would return. Shortly thereafter, that alleged cop returned to Cannon Street and he continued to bang on the door of that residence. When the victim and a family member answered, they observed the individual dressed in a police uniform. That uniform consisted of a shirt, a patch with the name of a police agent, affixed to it, as well as a badge, police radio, and what appeared to be a firearm. The alleged cop stated that he had spoken to his supervisor, who instructed him to make an arrest on the Cannon Street resident. That after another verbal altercation, the alleged cop departed. Police investigated and discovered that Ferrucci was allegedly posing as that officer. And a man accused of sexually assaulting a four-year-old girl in Florida was caught in Mansfield, Connecticut on Saturday. 28-year-old Blair Thompson will be extradited to Florida after detectives found he was staying in the Mansfield area. State troopers spent the weekend following various leads and conducting surveillance with little information to go on. State police say through their continuous efforts, Thompson was located and taken into custody without incident. He was being held on a $500,000 bond. And as we reported yesterday, tickets for the new Canaan Darien Turkey Bowl sold out. You can check out some of the line captured by Darien Times editor Susan Schultz. There were 4,700 tickets available for the game, and they were divided 60% going to New Canaan, the home team, and 40% to Darien. About 1,000 of those tickets were sold or distributed to team families and season ticket holders in New Canaan and to Darien team families last Friday. On Monday, both Darien and New Canaan sold out their remaining allotments in under 40 minutes. There will be no game tickets sold. New Canaan Athletic Director Jay Egan said that the high school brought in about 1,000 extra bleacher seats for the game, which we've been able to see while we're set up here at New Canaan. The balance of 1,500 tickets will be for standing inside the field complex. But of course, if you didn't get a ticket, the HAN Network will be live streaming the game both on our website, han.network, and on Frontier Communications channels 600 and 1600. You can also check out DarianTimes.com for a story by Dan Arestia that discusses some of the local traditions and viewing parties that are planned for that game day. But we are going to switch gears now and literally turn it over to Frank Renito with a look at the forecast. Frank. Thank you, Kate. And the play might be to stay inside and watch that game. There is a chance for some showers on Thursday during game day. We'll see temperatures in the mid-40s throughout the rest of this week. A lot of wind again today, gusts reaching as high as 35 miles per hour, and that will stay steady through the afternoon. Mostly sunny, though. Mostly sunny tomorrow, lighter winds around 10 miles per hour, and then some clouds moving into the afternoon before Thursday morning on game day. Overcast early on, and hopefully the showers hold off until around 3 or 4 o'clock. But it should be a lot of fun as we continue to work from up in the press box overlooking the stadium right now. Let's go back to Kate, and we'll see you soon. All right. Thanks so much, Frank. We are going to step out for a break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about what we're doing here at New Canaan High School later on today. That's coming up on your coffee break after this. Have a sports injury or slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast, without an appointment. Basketball, hockey, skiing, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care, open Monday through Saturday, now in two locations. The I Park Building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk and 36 Old Kings Highway South in Darien. Or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com, like them on Facebook. 
Why cook at all this holiday? Avoid the stress of holiday planning and let your friends at Walter Stewart's in New Canaan do the heavy lifting. Whether you're looking to fill in with a few crowd-pleasing sides or you want us to prepare your whole feast, from cranberry sauce to pumpkin pie, we're ready to simplify your holiday. Place your order from our holiday menu and spend your holiday the right way, relaxing. Our fresh prepared holiday meals to go are designed with your busy schedule in mind. Visit us at stewartsmarket.com or at 229 Elm Street, New Canaan. Hi, this is Leo Carl from Carl Chevrolet in New Canaan. And you've heard me talk about the Chevy Volt for years. The new model gets 53 miles on EV charge daily, plus 420 mile full range. But don't take my word for it. You need to come in and test drive the Volt yourself. Visit us at 261 Elm Street in New Canaan or online at carldirect.com. The holidays are a wonderful time to spend with families and friends, sharing a fantastic meal, football season is in full swing, the fishing has been unbelievable, and it's time to make a list and check it twice. Stop at the dock shop, get a fix of summer, and browse loads of new products, including fishing tackle, accessories, clothing, jewelry, and home decor. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The dock shop. 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or DocShop.com. At InSports Trumbull, the game is always on inside. Recently renovated and home to one of Connecticut's largest indoor turf fields, InSports is a multi-sport recreation center providing state-of-the-art facilities for league play, camps, and youth programs. Sign up now for InSports Fall and Winter Lacrosse Clinics and Leagues. With programs ranging from first grade all the way through high school, there's something for every lacrosse player at all levels. Programs include college coaches clinics, youth box winter leagues, high school winter leagues, and seven-on-seven -seven tournaments. For more information and pricing, visit us at InSportsCenters.com. Like us on Facebook. Discover a world of wellness in the heart of New Canaan. Halo Studios, New Canaan's first collaborative wellness center, offers you the freedom to choose from the best and latest health, fitness, and wellness options. Inside Halo Studios, you'll find all the wellness experts you need at places like Halo Fitness, Priority Wellness, and Sama Yoga Center. Come by for a free wellness assessment, open seven days a week at 45 Grove Street. For more information, visit halostudios.com or call 203-594-9909. Let our satisfied customers tell it. I have called Mr. Handyman for every reason, every occasion, every broken item, every leak. They have bailed me out on many occasions, and I would recommend them to anyone. For any project, large or small. Mr. Handyman, Welcome back to this Tuesday edition of Coffee Break on the HAN Network in the press box at New Canaan High School, getting ready for a busy day as we prepare for Turkey Bowl. But I'm going to throw it over to Frank Renito, who's going to tell you a little bit more about what we're doing later on today. Frank? Thank you, Kate. Of course, we were live yesterday at Darien High School previewing the Blue Wave as they get ready to take on New Canaan in Turkey Bowl 23. This afternoon, we will have a special hour-long episode of Nutmeg Sports right here in Dunning Stadium. That'll be from 2 to 3. We'll be joined by captains and player, excuse me, captains and coaches from the New Canaan High School team, along with a couple of community pieces. And our own Dave Stewart from the New Canaan Advertiser will join us as we look back on the New Canaan season. Again, all of that from two to three this afternoon here at Dunning Field. Let's throw it back over to Kate now. All right. Thanks so much, Frank. Well, back to local news. Ridgefield school officials have decided to look into whether Ridgefield High School's 725 start time can be pushed back. Robin Brown, a school nurse, told the Board of Education that kids are coming into the health office exhausted. She said some kids are getting up at 515 in the morning to catch a 630 bus. She said kids are tired, stressed and anxious from a lack of sleep. Faced with a petition signed by more than 700 people and passionate testimony from five parents on Monday night, Board of Education members urged school administration to study the problem. Changing start times could have implications for busing and the district's transportation schedules and costs, but you can get a lot more on that story at theridgefieldpress.com. 
And in other news, the Connecticut Audubon Society on Tuesday released its 10th annual Connecticut State of the Birds report, which painted a sobering portrait of bird species in the state, many of which are seeing drastic population drops over the past two or three decades. According to UConn professor Chris Elpick, who specializes in wildlife species, he said we have learned a lot about tidal marsh birds in the last 10 years. That's the good news. But the bad news is that many of those species are on a rapid trajectory trajectory to extinction. He said that the salt marsh sparrow has seen its numbers decline at a rate of about 9% annually since the 1990s. Bird conservationist and report co-author Patrick Comans agreed. He said 10 years ago there were two endangered species and now nine more species have been added to that list. He said the long-tailed duck has seen its numbers decline by about 80% in the last four decades and a similar drop was seen with the semi-palmented sandpiper. There's also a lot more on that story at MilfordMirror.com. We're going to step out for a break when we come back, recapping some of the top stories we're following today on your coffee break after this. What makes Dairy Ann special during the holiday season? Locally owned shops and restaurants where you can find everything you need to make your holidays more enjoyable. Start with breakfast, then shop for everything from toys to unique gifts and the latest trends in fashion. Take a coffee break. Stop at our farmer's market or one of our shops where you'll find an amazing selection of cheeses and meats. Then enjoy dining at one of our fabulous restaurants. This holiday season, experience shopping and dining in Darien. At Hoyt Livery, our goal is to always... Sam, what are you doing? We're filming a commercial. I'm checking out the new Hoyt on the Go app. Hoyt's, Hoyt's here. here! Are you ready for winter? Ski and Sport has everything you need to be fully outfitted for the season. A family-owned and operated business with over 40 years of experience, Ski and Sport's three convenient locations in Fairfield County offer top quality, high fashion ski and winter wear. In addition to clothing for men, women, and children, we also offer seasonal rentals for the entire family. Stop by our stores on 1 Ethan Allen Highway in Richfield, 877 Post Road East in Westport, and at 110 Main Street in New Canaan, or visit us at skiandsport.net. I really wanted something that felt like a home. Coming from a big house, I wanted the feel of a home as opposed to a condo. New Canaan is six minutes down the road. New Canaan's a beautiful little town to walk around. I work in Westport, my commute is 20 minutes. It's close to Westchester where my family is, so the location is ideal. There is no other town home that compares in the area. This is where I want to be. Want to reach new heights in your fitness and health goals? Find what you're looking for at Elevation Spin, Train, and TRX in Georgetown, Connecticut. Elevation Spin gives you purposeful spinning workouts inspired by the road. We encourage monitoring of heart rate and energy zones. Elevation also offers customized personal training with dedicated professionals passionate about helping you reach your goals. And let us motivate you to reach greater performance and functionality with TRX suspension training, using your own body weight for an incredible dynamic workout. Located at 4 Old Mill Road in Georgetown, call Elevation at 203-544-9503 or visit ElevationSpinTrainTRX.com for more. 
We're back on this Tuesday edition of your coffee break inside the new Canaan High School press box as we get ready for the Turkey Bowl. But first, recapping some of the top stories that we're following today, including that the Stanford Advocate is reporting that a suspect in the brutal murder of Stanford native Joey Comunale was indicted by a grand jury in Manhattan on Monday, just a day after proclaiming his innocence in an interview with the New York Daily News. 25-year-old James Rackover has been formally charged with concealing a human court corpse, tampering with evidence and hindering prosecution. In last week's stabbing death of 26-year-old Kamianale, a popular and athletic member of the Stanford community. The other suspect, 28-year-old Lawrence DeLeone, waived a court appearance and is expected to return today for a bail-related hearing. No new charges have been filed and both men are still being held on $3 million bonds. The suspects were initially brought up on charges of second-degree murder, but that was dropped at the arraignment pending further investigation of who used the knife in that stabbing. Authorities say Kaminale was killed November 13th after a night of partying at Rackover's luxury apartment at the Grand Sutton Tower in Manhattan's east side. The West Hill High School graduate was stabbed 15 times in the chest before his corpse was burned and buried in a shallow makeshift grave in New Jersey, according to police. And in other news, Sacred Heart University announced Monday an agreement to purchase the former GE headquarters in Fairfield, just over the Merritt Parkway from the eastern border. SHU President Dr. John Patillo said the school entered into agreement with GE to purchase its 66-acre formal global headquarters in Fairfield. He said they hope to use the property as an innovation campus to expand their new school of computing, which is focused on computer engineering, gaming, and cybersecurity, and to develop programs programs in STEM fields such as health and life sciences. They'll also move certain elements of the Jack Welch College of Business to the new campus, including a new hospitality hospitality management program that will make use of facilities both at GE and at the Great River Golf Club. And a Ridgefield police officer removed the image of a swastika from the playground wall in Ballard Park last Saturday. Police Captain Jeff Kreitz told the press Monday that police first received a phone call that night from a citizen who saw a photograph of the red spray painted symbol that someone had posted on the town Facebook page as a show of concern. The officer, according to Kreitz, was able to remove that mark by pouring some water on it. The incident's under investigation and police are asking anyone with information to contact them at 203 4 Three eight six five three one. Kreitz said they want to know about those incidents immediately and they always encourage the public to call them. Rabbi David Levy Reiner of Congregation Sheer Shalom of Westchester and Fairfield counties told the press he was preparing a statement and that he was deeply saddened and troubled by the incident. Jane Crimmins, a South Salem resident who frequents Ballard Park with her children, also spoke to the Ridgefield Press to report that she was organizing a peaceful gathering that will take place in front of the playground at two in the afternoon this Friday. And another Darien car dealership became the target of tire and rim theft during the early morning hours of November 13th. Employees at Land Rover of Darien at 90 Post Road found a white Jaguar F-type coupe with its wheels or tires sitting on bricks in the parking lot. According to police, the building on the property is currently vacant and the lot is being used to store vehicles. Though the lot is secured by a fence, those vehicles had been left unlocked in transit mode, which restricts many of their functions. Removal of the rims and tires requires a special lug nut key, which was left inside of the vehicle. Surveillance footage showed at least one suspect moving around the lot at 3.30 in the morning, and it is believed they pried the portion of the fence facing the Bertucci's parking lot to gain access. A canvas of the area the next morning did not produce any positive results, but the Detective Bureau did process the scene for any further evidence. The damage to the vehicle and the stolen parts were valued at about $9,000. And a Hamden man has been arrested for allegedly impersonating an officer wearing a fake uniform and carrying a weapon. Nicholas Ferrucci was arrested on Monday on a court warrant charging him with impersonating a police officer and second degree breach of peace. Those charges stem from an incident back on October 10th. Ferrucci started his ruse as a lawman when he started tailgating and flashing his vehicle's high beams around 1 a.m. at a motorist on Evergreen Avenue in Hamden. Frucci then followed that motorist to their home on Cannon Street. The operator of the vehicle quickly exited and identified himself as an off-duty officer. After a brief verbal altercation, that alleged cop left the area, stating that he would return. 
Shortly thereafter, the alleged cop returned to Cannon Street and continued to bang on the door of that residence. When the victim and a family member answered, they observed the individual dressed in a police uniform, which consisted of a shirt, a patch with the name of a police agency affixed, a badge, police radio, and what appeared to be a firearm. The alleged cop stated that he had spoken to his supervisor, who had instructed him to make an arrest on the Cannon Street resident. That led to another verbal altercation, and the alleged cop departed. Police investigated and discovered that Ferrucci was allegedly impersonating that officer. And finally, take a look at this video posted by Darian Times editor Susan Schultz. Some of the line yesterday to buy Turkey Bowl tickets, which sold out in less than 40 minutes in both New Canaan and Darian. But have no fear because you will be able to watch all the Turkey Bowl action live on the HAN network. And of course, it will also be streaming on Frontier Communications channels 600 and 1600. And we're here today to do some of our Turkey Bowl prep. Be sure to watch a special edition of Nutmeg Sports coming up at 2 o'clock. We're going to wrap things up here on your coffee break, uh, but be sure to check us out later on. Have a great day.